Jurisprudence The American faith in executions is fading fast, even in the most horrific cases. Sentence mitigation specialist Kate O'Shea, and assistant public defender Melissa McNeil speak behind Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooter Nico Las Cruz after the verdicts were read in his trial of at the Broward County Courthouse in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on October 13, 2022. Amy Beth Bennett slash Giddy Images On February 14, 2018, Nico Las Cruz took an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle to the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida where he murdered 17 people and wounded 17 others. This horrific crime was one of the deadliest school shootings in American history. If ever there was a living embodiment of what some death penalty supporters call the worst of the worst, a poster boy for the supposed necessity of capital punishment, Nico Las Cruz seemed to be it. Yet Thursday a jury of seven men and five women, drawn from all walks of life, sentenced Cruz to life in prison without parole instead of sending him to join the 305 other people currently awaiting execution on Florida's death row. This verdict was made possible because Florida law says that death sentences can only be imposed if the jury is unanimous. In Cruz's case, three jurors refused to vote for death because they were convinced by his defense that he is mentally ill. Even though not everyone on the jury agreed to spare Cruz's life, the verdict is a singularly important moment in the ongoing debate about whether this country should continue to use death as a punishment for crimes. Coming from Deep Red, Florida, a state long known as a hotbed of capital punishment, it is all the more significant. Over the last several decades, the death penalty landscape has changed considerably. Across the country, death sentences are way down, as are executions. The intensity of public support for capital punishment has waned and more states have abolished it in the last 15 years than in any other comparable period in American history. Those changes have been propelled by growing recognition of the death penalty's arbitrariness and unreliability, most especially worries about the risk of executing the innocent and of racial discrimination in capital sentencing. But, before the Cruz case, this changing landscape had not saved the lives of mass murderers like him. What happened, and why is the Cruz case different? For one thing, none of the usual anti-death penalty arguments were at play here. There was no doubt about Cruz's guilt, 